The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 372. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is the founder of Girls on the Go Club, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Pia Bose. Pia, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Uh, Hi, Sheena, and uh, hello to everybody who's uh, checked in to hear me speak. I'm from uh, India, and I'm the founder of a travel club for women called Girls on the Go that I started back in 2008 after quitting my career as a corporate lawyer. Thanks for sharing that. And Pia, what's your cultural background? Yeah, so basically, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Indian. I mean, I, you know, for people who are not very familiar with India, there are more than 100 languages spoken in our country. So, um, you know, I speak Bengali as my mother tongue. And, you know, of course, Hindi is a national language. So, so yeah, I come from a Bengali background. And uh, if you've heard of the city of uh, Calcutta, I stay somewhere close to Calcutta. Thanks for sharing that. I didn't even know India had more than 100 languages spoken in that country. So thanks for sharing that. And Pia, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? So one of my favorite uh, self-confidence quotes that I really love by is that when you are leading an orchestra, you turn your back to the crowd. Thanks for sharing that. And that's a great quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think you either feel it or you don't. So I I honestly cannot define it. But I think uh, there is that moment where you can do... It's not like, you know, uh, we don't have fear of failure. But... There is that moment when you are able to overcome that fear of failure and surrender to the, you know, the invisible forces that do govern the universe and choose to surrender, let go and just you know, trust that everything will fall into place and just courageously go ahead and do whatever you want to do. So once you have been able to do this, automatically you get this feeling which is the closest that I would you know, come to defining self-confidence, but it's a feeling that I, I think defies description of any sort. Thanks for sharing that. And I love that definition that you mentioned, especially, you know, we all fe- fear that we're going to fail, right? Not realizing failure is a good thing because sometimes it teaches us how to become a stronger person. It teaches us how to get back up and just keep going and going and going until we reach reach our goal or whatever it is that we want to reach. And like you mentioned, sometimes we just have to learn to let go and let everything fall into place because it can happen. So thanks for sharing that. And Pia, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? You know, I think for me, and I'm guessing for everybody, like, there are phases where you feel very self- self-confident and then there's this other phase where you kind of totally plummet down into not being too sure about what you're doing, whether you're good enough for, you know, all of those existential questions. So I think self-confidence comes in waves, if I might put it that way. So I wouldn't say there was this one moment where I felt so self-confident. And after that, I've never ever felt the lack of self-confidence. So I think it's it's like a cycle. It just goes on and on and on. There have been like a few points that I can uh, think of, you know, where I did feel that kind of surge of self-confidence. So one was, uh, you know, when I was 16 and I had... uh, gone for this impromptu, you know, not, not impromptu, actually, it was a bit planned, but it was my first solo trip ever on my own to South America. So I was uh, hosted by a Rotary Exchange uh, Club. It was like a cultural exchange for our students. So that was my first experience of really like letting go and, uh, you know, just going out there and discovering a part of the world I was absolutely not familiar with. So uh, it was very, very scary for me at times, very lonely for me at times. But the highs of the whole experience, just immersing myself in a brand new culture. And I found people there very similar to be like Indians, very warm and you know, very open and all of that. So it really changed my worldview. Before that, I was a frog living in a well, you know. So this, this experience was a mix of various emotions, but it really helped me to overcome a lot of my fears. So that was one that I can definitely think of. The second uh, distinct turning point in my life is that I think this is a common thing to many people who are working in companies or corporate careers 
which uh, pay you like a really good whatever salary. There is that fear of letting go of that money or that security or the illusion of security, if I might use that term. If you that is if you do not have your heart in what you're doing. If you love what you're doing, that's great. But I honestly did not. But the money was obviously a big temptation, and you know there are so many needs to be met. So there was this one point where I could allow myself to let go of that uh, illusion of security and just take that plunge and decide to explore what else life had in store for me. And through a series of explorations and a series of eliminations, I finally saw the girls in the course. So that was another huge thing that led to me, like, you know, being more confident about the way, you know, things can shape up if you decide to let go of what you clearly do not want in your life. Thanks for sharing that. And I love that you mentioned, you know, letting go of your corporate job. I mean, you're a lawyer, right? And like you mentioned, the money was good, but your heart wasn't in it. And we all sometimes stay in a job where, you know, we stay for the money, not realizing like we feel trapped. I'm sure you sat in your office thinking like there has to be more than, than this. And, you know, it led you to let go of your job or quit your job, not knowing what's going to happen. But the best thing is you can embrace the unknown and realize there's so much things that can happen that's good you know like anything is truly possible and you know because of because of that like what's your life been like now i started off honestly on a zero cash business model because just after i quit my job as a lawyer i went for this completely unplanned and impromptu trip to tibet and it wasn't even on the cards so i actually went to this place called lucknow which is in the northern part of india and there i met this this uh, cycle rickshaw guy uh, driver who actually suggested that I should go to Nepal because it was not too far away. And I just took a suggestion and I went there randomly. And uh, once I went there, I saw these travel agents selling trips to Tibet. And something within me told me that, look, sell everything that you have to if necessary, but just make this trip because you're so close to Tibet. And that trip was like a very, very creative moment of my life. And just the opportunity of standing face to face with the Everest and looking the highest peak of the mountain in its space was, I think, uh, another very, very uh, life-defining moment. And that was the time when I made a very clear decision that, you know, I can either choose to continue my uh, life the way it has been so far, where I'm just struggling to earn a living, but not actually living, or I can choose to focus more on living and let the income generation happen automatically at its own time. And... That was the biggest message that I took back from this trip. And uh, I came back and I started Girls to Go on a zero cash business model. Tibet also taught me this, that you know, most of us come from countries where we take democracy and fundamental rights completely for granted. And here I was in a country where people did not even have rights. You know, They had no free will. And that is something we take so much for granted in most of most of like the citizens of. So I figured that, you know, even if we living in politically free countries have no money, nothing, you know, nobody even supporting us or backing us, that's okay. But we do have freedom. And honestly, my entire life since the time that I made this decision has just been an experiment in free will. And it's, it's been an amazing, amazing journey. There have been highs, there have been lows, there have been times that I've questioned myself and all of that. But I have never, ever wanted to go back to the format of life that I was living. Since 2008, like, you know, uh, I've taken women traveling to uh, places that even I never dreamed of going myself, but I eventually did, to Antarctica, to uh, Mongolia, to Greenland, and many other uh, exotic places, to, and really, really far away and very remote places, and, uh, and meeting like fabulous people around the world. It's been an amazing journey. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. You know, that's a great story that you mentioned. And it's true. Sometimes we take, you know, the simplest things in life for granted. You know, what we think is something that's so small. People in other countries think it's a luxury. And I think it's a great reminder to know, like, we are a lot more grateful than we realize or luckier than we realize. And and to the woman who is listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Uh, I've always seen my mother, my grandmother, elderly women that I look up to and I've been brought up by, keeping family as the center of everything that they do. Now, of course, it has its pros and it has its cons. The cons being that, you know, you are just looking after family and, you know, maybe don't have an opportunity to live 
life the way you want it and all of that but i think the modern day woman can really find a good balance between having a you know a good family life as well as a uh, flourishing career with a supportive career or entrepreneurship or whatever you choose to because i do see a lot of pressure on women nowadays uh, whether it's in workplaces or women kind of sometimes self impose it on themselves that they feel that they need to kind of compete it out with men and be a man like in the corporate space i don't think that is necessary because i think what makes women so beautiful is the ability to be able to do both and I think you know we have it in us to be able to keep our families as priority number 1 and shape everything around it without letting go of our identity so that is also another experiment that i have been doing you know at a personal level because uh, one of the reasons i also chose entrepreneurship as a career choice is because i wanted to be able to have more control over my time so take it a pinch of salt you figure out your balance don't let anybody else define your boundaries for you you figure out how you want to take things forward thanks for sharing and if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with we, we have a facebook page so you could just check out for girls on the go club on uh, facebook we also there on uh, we have a website it's called girls on the go club.com and email id is girls on the go club at gmail.com also on twitter at gotg club thanks for sharing that and to our listeners if you want to connect with pia you can also head on over to the tauselfconfidence.com and search for pia's name her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about and i just want to thank pia for taking the time to share her story with us so thank you so much thank you so much shina Not a problem. It was great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self Confidence. Visit our website at the Tao of Self Confidence dot com to check out cool resources, blog articles, show recaps, and so much more. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 